Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Amalgamash, and today I want to look at the Korg Rhythm 55. This is a vintage drum machine lent to me by my friends Shane and Ryan over at Better Times Toys and Antiques. A drum machine like this is not cheap or common to come across in the wild. It is a rugged piece of equipment used for electronic drum loops that can be modified and edited in pieces on the fly. You can change things like tempo and a volume of the individual pieces of the drum set. All of the buttons here click in really well. It's a very sturdy piece of equipment. On the back we have trigger select, trigger out ports, the foot switch port, and the signal high and low out. The foot switch comes with the machine and it gives me a strong impression that this machine is designed to be used in a live setting. So it is very rugged. This is the foot switch itself. It actually has two. Let's plug these babies in. And we're gonna go through all of the different drum loops and listen to kind of what you can edit. And I'm gonna take and plug it into the only amp that I have which is a Line 6 Spider 300. It's a great little amp. I've had it forever. I bought it for my very ex guitar back in 2006. <coughs> and we plugged it in on the low side of the output so that I'd be able to hear kind of the low end of the beats. All right, I hope you can see all the controls really well. We're just gonna power it on. We have an A register that gives you access to all of these tracks in orange a B register for the tracks in white, and a C register for the tracks in green. And we have an upper and lower set of buttons. Those will give you access to all the upper listed tracks, and the lower set of buttons will give you access to all the lower listed tracks, A, B, and C respectively. This whole selection panel is how you access each track. So this is the volume, and it also powers on the machine. That's the start and stop button. This is the tempo knob. It will actually make the track slower or faster. This is the intro and fill in button. When you press this or hit the corresponding button on the pedal, it will improvise a little fill in for you and add a little bit of flavor. So the start and stop actually corresponds to the other button on the foot pedal. So right here is the swing control. I'll kind of give you an example of how that sounds in a little bit. You can turn swing on for all the rhythms or for the swing only rhythms, which there's there are some that are specified to be swing only. All right, let's actually try to listen to some of these. All right, I've got it playing Foxtrot. I'm adjusting the volume of the snare drum. I've got the hi-hat and bass drum turned up. I do not have the tom-tom or rim shot turned up at all. A little bit of ambient noise, a little bit of squeaking and such. That's coming from my uh, the thing that I have the machine sitting on. So the intro and fill in button seems to do turn up the speed. Intro and fill in button seems to do a good job of kind of improvising something new, or at least it has a preset list of pre recorded or pre-programmed intro and fill-ins. And if you don't like the sound of any one particular part of the drum set, you can change it. At least you could change its volume. All right, listen closely. That did not change anything because that's not a swing track. So we changed it to all rhythms, and now we're changing this drum track to swing. It's kind of an extreme example. You wouldn't really hear a swing played like this, but it, see how it swings, or rather hear how it swings the notes back and forth? Whereas when we turn it all the way down, it's very uniform. And that's what swing does. So we're going to try Bossa Nova by hitting these two buttons. It's the third button in the C register. It 
This has a completely different sound once you start turning the swing up. And I didn't like the cowbell, or the claves, I mean, so I turned those all the way down, I'm turning the speed up. And the black intro fill-in button works. All right, now let's try Disco 3. So last button in the top row, C register. Hit the wrong one at first. Get a realistic tempo for what could be a disco song. That sounds pretty good. It sounds much better coming out of my amplifier than it does coming out of my headphones editing this track. I'm going to play the waltz now. You know, standard three quarter time signature. Very much a rock waltz. Let's try let's see if mambo. Fourth button on the bottom, A register. That's very mambo-y. Sounds good. And there's no snare drum, so that's not going to change anything. Let's see about uh, rock five. Hopefully you can kind of see how this thing is operated by how I'm using it. And if you wanted to, you could pretty much extemporaneously hit any combination of these rhythms if you were going to play it in a live setting, if you wanted to use different combinations of drum lines for each song. I want to try this 5 4 speed. That is an unusual uh, time signature. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's five fourths beat. That's awesome. That's not a very common thing. Now, if you wanted to listen to something that had that kind of beat, a song, uh, you could check out Nine Inch Nails' March of the Pigs. And it doesn't sound like it would be a very natural beat, but after a while you get the hang of it. You can see how easy it is to kind of break the beat by really making the settings extreme. How about pops? That hi-hat is sounding wicked. But otherwise, all of these beats are really high quality programs being parsed and played with a sound driver, and they sound great. So I just want to give a shout out again as I play the tango to Shane and Ryan at Better Times Toys and Antiques. If you want to check them out in person, they are located in Columbia, Missouri, in the USA, at Artichoke Annie's, and I think the Midway Antique Mall. I think they've got a booth in each place, and you might be able to find something like this. So once again, thanks guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.